Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So today what I'm going to do, I will uh, talk about uh, interaction of, uh, for pricing methods for uh, sales for CPQ. Um, now pricing is, uh, is very important. Uh, so, you know, think about a scenario, right? You are a, you're a company, so for instance, who, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, ships uh, different beers. You are a brewing company, you sell for CPQ, uh, you know, for product stuff, and and you ship, you know, beers to different parts of the world. Now, uh, you might have a different pricing model for certain customers. Some customers might be like a loyal customer, so you wanted to give uh, a discount or a different pricing model altogether. Um, say for a few companies, or and also you wanted to uh, ship it to uh, different countries, right? So your pricing might vary. So imagine if you're doing all these things in a uh, spreadsheet, it can get very messy. Uh, you know, sometimes your sales reps or your finance guy might you know forget to update the pricing information, and you might end up having a legacy pricing. Uh, record so which might cause confusion and frustration right so to solve that problem cpq has a uh, you know way to help you with the pricing so there is a a concept uh, what we normally use in cpq that's uh, called as a price book so you might have seen um i just show you what my my price book so in in simple terms right so before i show you i just wanted to you know make you guys understand what price book is about so uh, as you would have seen till now, right? When when I when I was trying to create a code, I try to add a product. Okay, so every product has a um, um, the price information, right? So for instance, the Samsung uh, phone will cost you say two hundred bucks, the latest model. So now, where do you store that pricing information? You go store that information in the price book. So price book um, contains uh, entries related to the price of a specific product so say for instance i have a price book uh so each entry associated with the the price uh for a specific product right uh now say for instance if you wanted to give uh, um say a special price to a government agencies right you have few clients which is belonging to a government agency so you create a separate price book right and that price book will contain information about the products uh, with different price, you wanted to ship it to government agency. Uh, so, oh, sorry, you wanted to sell it to government agency. Now, similarly, if you wanted to make an exception for a few other different customers, you can do that using separate price book. But the problem is that imagine you have like fifty thousand, uh, just for the in a wilder scenario, I'm just saying, uh, fifty thousand different price book you have to maintain. It can get very messy, right? Um, so yeah, so it, CPQ solves that problem. Uh, CPQ uh, comes with a different pricing tool, right? Um, so the price books are important, right? Without price book, you can't really work. Uh, you can't really add, uh, you know, the, the product to the code. So the CPQ complements it. The in simple terms, I'm just gonna uh, uh, walk you through, guys, uh, to uh, different. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, different pricing tools like you know block price percentage of total option pricing so today i'm just going to give you a brief introduction so in the next episode we're going to you know start uh, building stuff right so but i believe the information is, is pretty important okay so uh first thing first okay i want to explain to you about the price book where does the price book comes in the picture so if you've been following along if you remember i created a product right <laughs> and say samson um say where is the product so i have samsung phone so when i create a product right i have to add a price book here so uh, add a price to the price book so i have to do that otherwise if you don't have a price right it will not you will not be able to see that product uh information in in a code line editor so let me try to demonstrate what I mean by that. So if I go to new, let's say I wanted to add a product, um, say any product, say let's say cattle, cow, <clears throat> say cow product or whatever. Okay, Wagyu beef, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of it's funny, but I'm not sure if you guys have eaten Wagyu beef, but it's one of the best uh, beef in the world, I personally believe, um, you know, 
you get in New Zealand. I mean, I'm not sure if you're getting the <clears throat> the very advanced cut version, but it, it's very popular in Japan. So this is a really, if you make a steak out of organ beef, it just melts in your mouth. Sorry, I digress. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I'll just make it active. Just let me try to see if I can add a wagyu beef to it, right? So <clears throat> let's see if I add a wagyu beef. Okay, so I don't have any price book information here. Okay, so now let me refresh it. Um, and let me try to go to the code and try to add that product. I know it's a ridiculous example, but just bear with me, right? I mean, why don't have fun, right, while explaining this stuff? Why I always get serious about things? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> now, if you try to add a product without, you know, any price, even the zero dollar, then you will may not be able to see that information. Let's see if I can see that. You see, you don't see anything, right? Because you don't have an entry associated with this specific product in a price book. Okay, so let's go back and let let me add um, price book. So I would say add standard price. What would be if list price? I would say even if I say you know, you know, say zero dollar. Let's see if I can. Okay, so you have an entry now in the price book. Okay, so now if you go back to the order, uh, sorry, code, um, and you just refresh it. <clears throat> now I know, I know. I mean, if you if you're an American, you might say, "Hey, we got a better beef, right?" I do understand, right? Um, <laughs> but you know, based on my experience, you know, I mean, I do like Angus, but you know, Wagyu is always my favorite. You know, just. You're agree to disagree. <laughs> You're allowed to disagree, right? So that's your opinion. Um, <clears throat> so uh, add products. Um, so if I try to search for Wagyu beef, hopefully I can find, I can eat some Wagyu beef tonight, right? So there you see, right? <clears throat> so this is how it works, right? The price book is still very important, uh, but <clears throat> without uh, adding an entry, uh, to uh, to a price book, you can't use a product in the code. It's pretty simple, right? Um, <clears throat> so sometimes you may not want to add a price, okay? So that's why I've added zero, because the zero fulfills the requirement uh, of having a price book entry. <clears throat> uh, so that's one of the things, right? Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to add a product to the code, okay? So sometimes, you know, the price might be, you know, zero, so... You, it's it's you still gotta add that entry to the price book. Okay, now I wanted to talk about the pricing tools. Uh, something you know I think you guys should know uh, before we actually get into the details, right? There's a few uh, pricing tools which you should know because we will be using it uh, in the future. So the first thing I want to talk about is the block price. Okay, um, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, from a trailer, which is pretty simple to understand. So the block price, what is a block price, right? It uses a flat price uh, for a range of quantities, right? Instead of uh, multiplying by the unit. So for instance, um, you know, if, if you guys say, for instance, I run a, you know, the training platform. So if you guys are streaming video, uh, say from my platform, it might cost you say $10 or so, $30 for, a month for say 10 concurrent viewers uh, or it might cost you say $50 for you know uh, 30 concurrent viewers so uh, that's the block pricing model works it's pretty simple we're gonna do that uh, using hands-on we're gonna do hands-on right <clears throat> uh, uh, I think my throat is itchy again uh, sorry and just that uh, my partner uh, she got COVID uh, unfortunately, on Friday, tested. So um, uh, I haven't been tested positive yet because I did a test and came negative. So fortunately, I'm fine, but I still got this bloody itchy throat. So finding it very difficult to talk, but it's all right. You know, I have to do the training. You know, you guys are preparing for certification, so it becomes my responsibility. So, all right, sorry, doctors. Uh, percent of uh, total pricing. Um, so the 
the percent of total pricing, which is also called POT, right? P-O-T. So it looks the sum of other product price, then take a percent of that sum. Okay, so what that means is that you go to a restaurant, right? Um, so let's say you go to a restaurant in the United States, um, because this example, what I'm going to go, is not really applicable to New Zealand. Um, so you go to a restaurant in the United States and say you bought a product for, um, so you bought a food, right? Or you, you're going to do a dine-in, right? So your total cost of, of, of the food around 80 bucks and you, and they say, okay, 10% um, of the overall uh, order, you have to pay a tip, right? Means $8, right? So 88 bucks. So that's, uh something you can categorize as an example for the percent of the total so you know you like total percentage for the uh, 10 percent for the total uh price can be categorized tip in new zealand we don't give tips right there's no concept of tip here right you go to a restaurant it's not it's mandatory you have to pay the tips right i know it might be shocking for people from other countries but yeah i mean it's up to you but there's no concept as such right i don't know about australia i haven't lived there so i'm um, just Anyways, so that's one example. Right? I hope you understand, right? I guess, you know, if you're from different parts of the world, you might have given tips, right? When you go to a restaurant, so you get a bill and the, and, and you might get on a, on, a, on a receipt saying that, okay, 10% uh, of the total order will be given as a tip, right? Okay, so that's a percentage of the total. And this pricing tool uh, gets used uh, based on a different scenario. Um, but for now, this is what it is, right? This is what actually uh you mean when you talk about percentage of the total pricing okay now there's another one which is uh, kind of used um uh often right that's uh, option uh pricing override okay um so as the name indicates right you are overriding a price so um so it actually replaces the price of product when it is within a bundle okay <clears throat> so for instance uh, you're selling um, uh, Apple, sorry, not Apple, uh, Samsung um, headset, right? Um, for say 200 bucks, right? In a bundle when you're buying a Samsung phone. Uh, but when you are buying as an individual, right? Without a bundle, like say for instance, I wanted to buy just a Samsung headset, you're paying 220 bucks. Okay. So uh, this is why the pricing override actually means, right? It's usually uh, comes in picture when you're dealing stuff in a bundle. So the, if the product involved in a bundle, then the price will be different to compare to when you wanted to sell it uh, individually, right? Okay, <clears throat> so now another thing I wanna talk about is the cost plus market pricing. Um, uh, don't worry, we're going to do hands-on so you will understand you know, how to use it. But before you know, you guys decide to use it, it's better to understand the concept, the basics. Okay, <clears throat> so this one is pretty interesting. Uh, this is like, you know, if you're a sales guy, you wanted to make a commission, so you add some percent on top of the product cost. So what that means is like, for instance, uh, you go to a showroom, <clears throat> right? Uh, you know, you wanted to buy a car, right? And often you see, right, car prices like 34,000 or, you know, or 60K, okay? Or say 120K if you wanted to buy an Audi or BMW, right? So, so the actual price may be, say, 110K and the sales rep would have added 10K to make a commission. So they're selling it for 120K. So that's why there's cost plus market pricing means where the sales rep adds value <clears throat> on top of the product cost right okay now another one which is the final one uh, i promise i won't bore you more uh it's the contract pricing okay <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me my apologies for coughing um sorry i can't i, know, I got bloody itchy throat since since yesterday um because yeah the weather is crap anyways it's been rainy since whole day so that's not helping either. Okay, so contract pricing, um, it sets the account specific prices for individual products. So for instance, I'll give an example. Um, you wanted to give a government agency a certain different price. 
you wanted to give a private agency different price. For instance, you are selling to Defense Corporation, <coughs> say, a headset for, say, a military style headset for, um, uh, say, 200 bucks, and the same headset might cost, say, 300 bucks if you're selling to a civilian, right? Normal uh, organization. Uh, you get the point, right? So the price varies uh, based on the uh, amounts. So it uh, for accounts, specific accounts, right? So <clears throat> uh, defense corporation might get a Samsung uh, phone for thousand bucks, and a non defense corporation might uh, get the same phone for eleven hundred bucks. So that's how it works. <clears throat> so contract pricing. <clears throat> now. And there are different things uh, you have to keep into consideration, right? Uh, now, uh, there are different pricing fields, uh, usually uh, like, you know, original price, list price, special price, regular price, customer price, partner price, net price. These are all the things you, you will get to know more as we go along. So, um, so I will talk about the pricing field anyway. So, the you know, original price, right? You might get to hear this term. You know what? Let me cancel it. So I will, I'm not going to append the price next to it, but you just get the point. So uh, we say, so original price, okay? So it means the price, book price, whatever the price you have in a price book, right? That's the price. If I code, 200 bucks uh, for the price of a Samsung phone, if you remember, that's the price I put for the Samsung phone um, uh, here. So, so this is a uh, price. Okay, um, so that's something excellent. Then we have list price. Um, okay, list price includes, uh, you know, it could be a price book price or you can say block price or, you know, percent of total price or override, could be, could be anything, okay? Now, uh, original price cannot be a block price or a price override or a percent of total price, right? So now we have special price. Um, um, the special price uh, comprises of cost price, cost plus uh, market price, contractor price, or option discount. Okay, so discount we're going to talk about later uh, when we talk about the discount module. But right now, just don't worry about the discount. Right? I hope you understand what discount means. Right? You go to the shop, someone says it ten bucks, can you give me some discount? So they will give you for eighteen bucks. Right? It's a two dollar discount. So kind of approach. Uh, in simple terms, right? It gets complicated when you know when we consider other factors, but we're going to talk about that later. Then you have regular price, okay? So regular price, it's the result of you know volume-based discount. So just keep that in mind for now. Then you have customer price, you know, result of manually editable discount. So these are discount related. So for for now, just ignore it. Uh, partner price, you know, again the partner discount, the net price distributed discount. So these are the a few things you have to consider, but these ones will be more commonly used for now. Uh, so just keep that into consideration, okay? So in today's lecture, we learn about the price book, why price book is important when you're dealing with the sales for CPQ, right? Without price book entry for that specific product, you cannot use that product in a code, okay? Now, uh, we also looked at the different pricing tools, block price, uh, percentage of total, that's POT, uh, option pricing override, cost plus market pricing, contract pricing. Okay, so uh, that's the thing uh, we have looked at it. So in the uh, next episode, what we're going to do, we will look at implementing block pricing, right? Then after that, we're going to look at implementing percentage total. Then we implement option pricing. Then we will configure cost plus when we create a account-based contract pricing. And also we talk about, we'll look at manual overrides. A lot to cover. Pricing is a very important module. Uh, I guess it, it covers 
uh, at least 16 percent it holds the weightage so which is very important so i would highly encourage you guys to pay close attention to it like the product bundle like the, the product rules product rules are important um so we got a lot to cover and uh, i'm going to speed up the process a lot because uh, i will be away for a week from 18 to 22nd of july so i won't be making a video just to let you guys know in advance uh, because i'm just going to a uh, different city to sort out some stuff um so yeah hopefully i'll my partner will recover by that um yeah it sucks to have you know sick people in the house but that's what it is right you have to look out to your family at the end of the day all right that, that being said uh i hope you guys have an amazing sunday adios